right, we've had a bit of drama. One of the motors has actually stopped working. I uh, put everything back together, uh, went for a quick ride, and the hub motor stopped working again. I've traced it back to the controller. Uh, looks like a blown capacitor, and also there was a nut floating around inside. And you can see there's a bolt in there as well, jammed in between the capacitors. Right, the new controllers have arrived from Far Driver. So I've just got to wire those up now. That goes into there. A lot of them I won't need. I'll need the the hall sensor, that one, um, power, I think that one's the power, throttle, which is probably that one, yeah, and maybe the reverse one as well, so uh, the other ones I probably won't need, they're uh, like alarms and central locking and that sort of thing, so yeah, we'll get those installed today, I'll take the old Kelly out and um, put them up under there, and yeah just get everything wired up and uh, hopefully we'll be back in action So I've got the controllers both wired up to the motors and the battery. They've got a self-learning function. You power them up and hold the throttle down and they just spin the wheels and they sort of learn about the hall sensors and the angles and everything. So I'll make them self-learn one at a time. I'll start with this right side. I've got the uh, back end jacked up off the ground so that the wheels can spin freely. Connect. So now we can go to parameters. Um, we'll change this around a bit because it's not quite right. It's got, I think it's got 16 pole pairs, this one. So I'm going to bring the line current right back to 40 amps for now. And we can change that later if we need to. Maximum phase current, we'll say 300. And we can go into um, expert mode there, so there's a lot more options to play with, but I don't think I need to do anything else there for now. So I'll leave everything else as is for now, and we'll just uh, we'll get it self-learning and see how it handles these motors. I think the idea is to hold the throttle down and the controller spins it up and figures out what sort of motor it is, and then it spins backwards. So we'll see how that goes. It seems to have sorted itself out. So now I just can use the throttle normally. That seems okay. And we'll try reverse because I've got that hooked up. Yep, that's all good. Working well. So reverse only goes quite slowly. You can change the speed of everything as well. So I'll record all those settings, wire up the left controller, and we'll let that, that self-learn as well, and then we will parallel the throttle 
connections up so that the one throttle controls both motors at once. Alright, that's in self-learning mode. We'll go through and uh, put in the same settings as the other motor so everything's even. That's all good. We say before maximum line current 40. I'll make this motor direction go in reverse because it's on the other side. Motor direction 1. I'm pretty sure that makes it go forwards on this side. So we'll save that. Yep, that's going forwards, so we'll try pushing the reverse button. Yep, perfect. So everything seems to be working okay. Both motors are matched up to the controllers. I turn everything off and connect the throttle up to both controllers. Positive and negative from one controller going to the throttle and signal going to both controllers. So hopefully the one throttle will uh, run both controllers. Yeah, look at that. Nice. They're looking pretty even. That's basically all ready to go now. Battery is fully charged. So we'll take it for a wee spin and see how it handles. I've got a gauge there that tells me the remaining power in the battery. I'll better watch that and um, see how long the battery lasts. Hopefully everything holds together this time. Plenty of power. So I'm going downhill now and that's regenerating, so it's pushing power back into the battery. Oh, well, that's going really well so far. Um, so I've come about a couple of kilometres and it's down to 96% and everything seems to be going okay. Nothing's, nothing's heating up at all. And when I was coming down the hill there, I could feel the resistance, I could feel it um, regenerating. It was like, it was kind of like having the brakes on. And I could see there was 600 watts going back into the battery, which is brilliant. So the regen definitely works. That's good to see. I could do with a handbrake. <laughs> it's, um, there's no handbrake at the moment, so I'm just kind of going to sideways drop the battery right back up 
just by going down the hill. That's so good. It's working really well. So pretty much at the bottom of the hill now. It's about four kilometer downhill. The battery's at 100% because it's been regenerating. We'll check the temperature of everything. It's just, it's just warm. Nothing hot though. The hub motors are just barely warm. So that's brilliant. That's working really well. So regenerating, it doesn't really produce a lot of heat. It's just poking power back into the battery. Now, I didn't even have to use the front brakes coming down there because the regeneration was um, doing all the work. That's brilliant. This will be the true test going up my four-wheel drive track. It's quite steep, so it's going to use quite a bit of power here. She's doing it. Oh. got plenty of power like it's probably about going uphill it's probably about the same speed as my TRX 350 I think it's um, not super fast uphills but yeah it's doing the job So we did about probably nine kilometers uh, round trip. The first part of it was all downhill and then up the four wheel drive track, which is about 250, 300 meters elevation from the, from the bottom to the top. So that's a good test for everything. Uh, it held up perfectly. Plenty of life left in that battery. We're at um, 18.3 amp hours. 66% charge still. That's so now that we've uh, given it a good shakedown, everything seems to be pretty stable and nothing's broken so far. I'll go around, check all the bolts and everything, make sure nothing's come loose, and um, charge that battery up and we'll give it a bit more of a test.
Oh man, that's a lot of fun. So I've been up and down about three times. Um, so I've probably done about 20 kilometers and still on 58%. Probably get like maybe 40 kilometers on one charge. I think depending on how um, how rough and hilly it is but it's quite a rise to the top of it so yeah it was working pretty hard going up and then it charges itself coming back down so it's got a pretty good range actually more than I thought for that single battery um, it's all all working perfectly now like nothing's getting hot because um, we're going so fast it's the air's cooling everything down it's it's barely even warm so that's good it's uh, handling it quite easily it's got a lot of uh, capacity in that battery I'm impressed so if you want to check these batteries out I'll leave a link in the uh, video description head to bigbattery.com and uh, check out their range thanks for watching guys we'll catch you next time <laughs> that's a really good battery like it stores a lot of power in there. I could probably run my whole house on that uh, 172 volt battery. In fact, what I could do is get a Pelton wheel, stick it on the axle, take the wheel off, put a Pelton wheel on the axle, roll out a lay flat pipe in the stream, and have it generate power back into the battery. So it would be basically a portable hydro power generator. So you could go camping or whatever, uh, wherever there's a stream, roll out your pipe. Put your Pelton wheel on there and then just let the water run run the, um, the hub like a Pelton wheel. And that feeds power back through the controllers into the batteries. So yeah, I might do that in a follow-up vid um, if, if anyone's interested in, in uh, seeing that. Let me know and we'll have a go at it.